Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. Today is Tuesday, January 23rd. Welcome. Sit down, buckle up, and put your tray table up. We're going over to the pond. First story around the corner. UK climate chief admits net zero plan based on a single year of data. Are you shocked? Let's go to the next story. Egypt's gas and LNG global challenges and global ambitions. Great, great story from the folks over there at RBAC. Uh, The Davos uh, consensus is finally cracking. This is a pretty cool story. Coming around the corner next is the U.S. is breaking oil production records with fewer drilling rigs. Here's how. And then the last one coming around the corner, Michael and I have been talking about for years, we don't understand why the price of oil is not higher. Oil uh, strategies do not expect Mideast tensions to reduce crude supply. I don't know. Who knows if it's even going to raise the price? But let's go to the first article. UK climate chiefs admit net zero plan is based on a single year of data. I'll tell you, the Royal Society study that was uh, doing this, I believe they did 37 years in this Royal uh, Society um, uh, weather data modeling. He said that uh, Chris Stark conceded that his comment relied on modeling is an entirely valid concern. When we sit back and take a look, If you're going to be a climate activist, please let's use facts and not something within the last five minutes. If we as energy experts around the world want to elevate humanity from poverty, we need to rely on physics, facts, and sustainability. And if you can't provide facts, Uh, By looking at one year, you underestimate storage and grossly overestimate the need for everything else. That's exactly what the committee climate change has done. So we can only print so much money. And then we can come in and say, wait a minute, renewables are the cheapest deliverable ever. That's not true because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine, but you have to be able to go and produce all of the energy for the worst possible moment, which adds the cost up. So I I think this is a pretty funny article. You need to go ahead and check it out. Let's go over the next one. Egypt's gas and LNG, global challenges and global ambitions. This is over at uh, the folks over there at R, uh, RBAC. They are fabulous. We've got Dr. Uh, Robert Brooks and Cyrus Brooks. Have I've had the pleasure of interviewing both of them, and they are phenomenal. They are a natural gas uh, commodities firm that they have around the world. Uh, market fundamental analysis tool. You got to go see, check them out. Um, Egypt has uh, 62% of their grid is supported by natural gas. And uh, Miss Producer, if you could fly in uh, Israeli gas fields, this is the Leviathan field. And you take a look at Cyprus, you take a look at uh, Israel and Egypt, those pipelines coming over uh, are uh, the proposed existing LNG plant and then the existing LNG plant, and then the uh, optional new pipelines. Right now, from the Leviathan field, they have to go to Israel and then over to uh, Egypt, and it would sure make a lot more sense just to go straight over. So if it does uh, happen, it would make sense. Now, for local consumption, if you take a look at... Um, they have plans to assist in the development on the offshore Gaza marine field 
approved by in Israel. Uh, and if it would, it would help Gaza achieve energy independence as well. There's a lot going on in this article, and we need to go ahead and follow up back uh, with um, RBAC and really help uh, go through this and more. However, taking a look at LNG uh, exports, this could actually be a big player there. The Davos consensus is finally cracking. This is a funny story. When we take a look about the fallout of Davos, there's several different mm -hmm. things. I think that we're seeing in a society that uh, Davos is really kind of con concerned that the, their narrative has been broken. One of the leaders has said, we've lost the media. No, you didn't lose the media. The media, the people left the media, the wide mainstream media, people are tired of it. So you took it to the too far to the next level in order to go ahead and say, wait a minute, this is the way we're going to go. People are now tired of that. Uh, it also took $40 billion in Elon to go ahead and give everybody their own voice. And people are not watching TV. They're not watching uh, um, streaming services. They're watching podcasts. Um, and so the bulk reports uh, percolating out of the WEF uh, have been scornful, revealing a pro, uh, proposed program of enlightened elite gl global governance is not going quite as planned. That's a great way to say it. Um, Stephen Schwartzman, CEO of the financial services Blackstone, mused that he didn't think the United States was prepared for further deficits and open borders. They are also believing that Trump is going to be the Republican nominee and stands a really, really good chance of being elected. It's not whether or not you're a Democrat or you're Republican. The Americans want American first. I don't really care if you're Republican or if you're a Democrat. I am a Christian male and I am wanting absolutely America and our children first. If you're a Democrat and you're a Republican and you don't have God, country, children first, I really don't really care about you anymore. And that is the way the rest of the United States is coming along. So uh, when we take a look at Davos, this is a really good article on uh, what's coming around the corner. Now, the U.S. is breaking oil production records with fewer drilling rigs. Here's how. Uh, you take a look at this, uh, has been holding or at near record high since October, uh, since the previous, even though the number of ap active domestic oil rigs is down by 30% from four years ago. So drilling efficiencies is what it's all about. In the Permian Basin, average lateral lengths defined by the horizontal sections of a well grew over 250% over 10,000 feet from 2010 to 2022, while an average oil production per rig grew from 126 barrels per day in 2010 to 1,211 barrels per day in 2022. That is significant. So not only having the longer laterals, not having to drill as many holes is making the economies of scale and the efficiencies better off. So um, that is the good old American know-how and uh, being able to get that done. Hats off to the, all the folks in the Permian. This is one that Michael and I have been talking about a bunch, and we're just kind of scratching our heads. Oil strategists do not expect Mideast tensions to reduce crude supply. There's a couple reasons for that. Let's jump into the article here. Uh, Rig Zone just reported uh, the strategists do not expect current Mideast tensions to reduce the crude, uh, crude supply, even with changes to normal shipping routes already underway. 
part of this is due to the um, the fact that Russia has been pumping up and already selling everything that they can. Iran really has been taking advantage of shipping everything it can. Both of those are almost pretty immune from the Red Sea. The only ones that are in trouble are going to be the U.S. and or any of the other folks. So that is why, in my opinion, uh, we're seeing a movement away from the U.S. petrodollar and uh, it's only going to go to rubles and the yuan and any of those kind of things. So you're really looking at not impacting like it would have been in the past. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody, all of our subscribers, and Mike will be back tomorrow. Please uh, let us know any questions you have. Uh, we've got some new sponsors coming up. We've got some new uh, podcasts dropping. We just uh, dropped uh, NCN Technology with Sharon Munch, CEO, and it is a phenomenal podcast. So reach out and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks.